First off, thanks a lot for the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to speak here. Uh, this is a joint work with Kaurono. And it is, it is, as it is in the title, it's about our novel conjecture for our chain complexes and augmentation ideals. Now, I will start by uh, recalling what is Arnold conjecture. Maybe, well, oh, everybody knows, but I will still recall this. So we have a symplectic manifold of the form. We have a Hamiltonian function there, which is a which is time-dependent Hamiltonian function. Then we can form a vector field, uh, which is defined by the condition that so as if it were a gradient, but uh, instead of the Riemannian metric, we want to use our uh, symplectic form. And um, once there is a vector field, there is a flow. So the diffeomorphism phi generated by the one shift is the subject of the Arnold conjecture. So it's called Hamiltonian isotopic to identity or just Hamiltonian diffeomorphism, if you like. And so the conjecture says, um, ah, one more definition before I state the conjecture. So for manifold, by the way, is closed. So there are many different versions. So we are working with closed manifolds. And Morse number of M, so M of M, inevitably because M is Morse and M is manifold, no way around them, so M of M. And they call the minimal possible number of critical points of a Morse function. On the manifold. And the Arnold conjecture says, um, that if all the fixed points of phi are non-degenerate, then their number must be not less than m of m. Actually, he stated this conjecture without non-degeneracy assumption. You can read it in Contre-Rendu, marqué, or this is, this is written that it is just a diffeomorphism. But this is the most popular version, and I will, I'm going to deal with this. So the reformulation, uh, which is convenient and also maybe more popular than the conjecture, is <coughs> about the periodic orbits of periodic Hamiltonians. So it says the following. For one periodic time dependent Hamiltonian. And P be the cardinality of P of H, assuming they are non degenerate.
So then the another formulation of Darnold conjecture, which is, which is equivalent, says that P of H And there are also homological versions of the Arnold conjecture, which are at least as popular as the conjecture itself. So I will still keep AC for this conjecture. So for any field F, we can replace the most number by the total Betty number of the manifold. I will denote it by B and F. We can make it a little bit better here. So A, C, H. So here, this is the Betty number. And these are Q, I, R, torsion numbers manifold so this is actually what uh, is in the right hand side of the Morse inequalities in their strength control so of course what we have that this implies this implies that so I see But there is no way back in general. So if we, if we have proved ACH, we don't get Arnold conjecture in general. And the basic reason for this is fundamental group. So that, I mean, th this number and this number, I, and I want to denote this also somehow. The reason is that, um, um, well, there is something positive in this direction. So there is a classical result by Smith, which says that if pi 1 is equal to 0 and 2n more than 6, then Morse number is equal to this B of m. So, but if, if fundamental group is not 0, then usually this thing is more than Usually, I mean that there's a lot of manifolds like this. For example, for Poincare sphere, it is well known that we have strict inequality. And this also, uh, this is just not, not just an abstract phenomenon, it occurs in symplectic world because by theorem of Joel Fine and Dim Panov, Every, fun, every group, every finitely presented group, is the fundamental group of a spherical, I mean, then just even just Calabial symplectic manifold of dimension six. So this will occur. So this symplectic condition doesn't save us here. So in order to say what, what, is, what is known about this conjecture, I will need some definitions. Spherical Calabial, but I will for, forget spherical very quickly, so I will say Calabial.
Then monotone. Also only on the spheres. Then weakly monotone. Here I need my paper. So this is 3 minus n. Also for all the spheres. And one more thing which I must say is about the minimal churn number. So we will denote by n the minimal churn number. So, um, and now before I state, uh, recall the theorems, I will change the definition, change the Arnold conjecture because in, in the, the notation, I want pH be the set of contractible pH points. Arnold, of course, didn't. Uh, he asked about all periodic orbits, and this this may be. Um, this may be a big change because now we, we have a whole activity about non-contractible orbits. So it may well happen that um, even we can prove Arnold conjecture in contractible world, but maybe there are sufficient contractible plus non-contractible. So, but this is out of reach for the moment. So I will be working only with contractible periodic orbits. And so the, um, the results which are here This is a very classical stuff. Oh, I don't need this anymore, actually. This was also our conjecture over Z, Z2. Well, by the way, Z2, this was, this was stated in the paper, but it is not very important, I guess. It's just the question of orientation of modular spaces. I did it. I did it. Ah, it was over integers. Okay, so, so I think it, it's okay to, to leave it like this, right? Yeah, yeah, this, this, I, I didn't yet finish this. So uh, they, they required uh, that big N is more than small N, so which usually happens because big N is small. So then, um, that's your paper of 95, right? But it works for every weekly monotone. So this, this, uh, these techniques, we will use this. And I just mentioned the two much more general results and much more complicated, but with, which will not, uh, I will not touch these things here. So. So any M.
but on low variations. Right? So in parallel, there was another paper. By the way, the dates are approximative, as is, is always the case with it, with the discoveries. So it's maybe, maybe be inverse, actually. Yeah, <laughs> inverse. yeah so th this, this is like this. And this. So, so, so. But plus minus two years, I mean. So, um, so this is. So I put, I put this just because, um, you can see now that all the results are purely homological. So no, nothing here deals with real Morse, uh, Morse number of the manifold. And because of the fundamental group, this doesn't imply the initial Arnold conjecture. So the first question to ask in the direction of the stronger Arnold conjecture is to, to try the first possible, the simplest possible invariants arising from the fundamental group, which are not captured by homology number of generators. So if we have a group G finitely presented, so take a free resolution of G, I should write one to respect the fact that she may be not commutative, this thing. These are free finitely generated. So this is a resolution. Ranks dr r. So The minimal possible number of generators is d small r. The bigger thing generators plus relators r. And we can ask whether um, phi small of h is more than d of g. P of H, second more, more difficult story, whether it is more than D of G. I'll refer to this um, queries as Arnold conjecture pi 1, Arnold conjecture pi 1 prime. So e even this simple thing are not known today. So even this is not clear. For, for most theory, it's completely obvious because if you have a a Morse function, then the number of critical points of index one is always more than number of generators of the fundamental group by the obvious reason. And the total number of critical points includes also the critical points of index two. So then this, this is also true. So um, Arnold asked this question. Uh, yeah, I think so. So you mean if you if you need to put something here, <laughs> then you <laughs> have this great here. So Arnold asked this this question, right? So uh, he uh, when the, the proof the proofs using Floer complex appeared, he asked whether Floer Floer technique can also recover these these inequalities which are, of course, much weaker than his original conjecture. Uh, so our paper is a, some progress towards the first question. We will prove something in this direction. I will state, state it now, but just let me say that Really, almost nothing is known about this. So one lower bound follows from 
theory of Jean-Francois, who explained this before today in the morning. So his result implies that we have already, we have always one uh, periodic orbit if the fundamental group is not trivial. So, well, th this is th this is always obvious. So this, I, mu I must start to put the indices because <laughs> it's obvious. So this is Conley index, Conley Zender index. I don't need to recall what is this, thanks to Victor. So um, if phi one m is non-trivial. And M, M is Calabi-Yau or monotone. So I can now state the main theorem of the talk, which says that if M is weakly monotone, I know, yeah, it's st still not, still, I, I need one more definition, sorry, so. Um, so D of G, I said what it, what this is this. Take a group ring, take the augmentation homomorphism. I will denote by G of G the kernel of epsilon and by delta of G the minimal number of generators of G, J, G as the G mon over the G. So this is a very nice invariant. I will, a little bit later, I will say uh, what, uh, how it behaves. So now I, now I can really state the theorem. Then we have P of H more than delta of G. If infinite, is more than one. And again, this is trivial, so I should add this uh, magic index here to make it. So I, um, this is the shortest statement possible. Now, a little bit later, I will specify to give uh, some some more exact things and put, putting Conley index, index for, uh, Conley Zender index, for example, here. So, but first of all, let me say two words about delta G because it's very nice invariant. So I will assume that G is finite group because it occurs in our results, it occurs only for finite groups. Um, so delta G is equal to one if and only if G is finite cyclic group. Second delta of G is equal to D of G actually if G is solvable. Then delta of G is equal to two if G is simple and non-abelian. Non-abelian means just not cyclic, a simple, really simple non-abelian group. And from these three things, so the first is an exercise, which is not so easy, but this is an exercise. So third is obvious, but through the very heavy machinery through uh, the theorem, through the classification of finite simple groups, which implies that any finite simple non-abelian group has two generators. So it, it's 
number of generator D is equal to 2, then delta is equal to 2, and it can be one. But this, um, on the contrary, is a real theorem, which is not easy to prove, as it's due to Carl Grunberg. He characterizes actually like this grid. And of course, he proves this by induction on the central series, but this is tricky. It is not obvious at all. So now that the corollary, um, as corollary from, from these things, we recover uh, the Arnold conjecture, the AC. Uh, I erase this, huh? Well, we, <laughs> we recover the erased Arnold conjecture for the case when G is simple or solvable. So for the infinite, well, we, we uh, unfortunately, for infinite group, we have only this, so only one. Now I will specify a little bit the, um, this theorem, because it, the more precise forms, they depend on the type of manifold which we consider. So the best ones are Calabillo. Or at least big N is more than small N. <coughs> then So G is finite. So in general case, It is slightly weaker because of gradings and other structures. Just weakly monotone, then this is this will be weaker. Well, the second is the same. So, and all, all these things hold also that if pi 1m is not finite, but if we can map it epimorphically onto finite group G, and then we will have the same uh, inequalities replacing pi 1m by G. So just rewrite the, the statements for, for the case of uh, inserting G instead of pi 1 M. And it will work if pi 1 M has an epimorphic 
map to, to this finite group. Um, so then um, one can ask also what about P2 minus N? Do we have some improvements? We have some. And of course, we have improvements for any index, but they become more and more complicated because algebra becomes more and more complicated. So I will stop at the dimension of, at the degree 2 minus n. Just cite one result. Well, here I want it to be Calabial. Spherically Calabial. Yeah, C1 equals on, on sphere. On sphere. So then I, I need the paper here. So then, ah, and we also need pi 1 m finite. Th this thing wouldn't work here. So then first, is more than delta G so the usual homological um, estimate coming from fields is from homology with coefficient in the field it's just P2 minus N is more than B2 so we, we can add this which is always positive And this is the minimal possible rank of um, the modules in the free resolution of Z over ZG. So just think of definition. So. resolution of z over zg um, then m2 of l let it be rank of f2 well rank th these are these are supposed to be free modules so then I uh, rank is just the number of free generators and then is the minimum of M2 of L over all the resolutions. So you see that becomes complicated. So we, we can go to three, four, and then <laughs> we'll have this, here are some alternative sums, so, and here we will certainly get mu3 and mu4 and so on. Okay, these are these are the statements. I think there is still one more statement about the general case, completely general case, right? So we, we actually we have one. Infinite, infinite. So so I will set this so the the last the last thing is the theorem that um, for any M And this uses this the, the theory of Fukai Ono uh, for rational coefficients. Th these ones, this, these things are um, require only weakly monotone uh, floor theory. So for the method, now I will I will explain the method first before giving the details of the proof. I will explain on how how I mean 
on what it is based H. So Floer complex it goes from here, so we start with contractible periodic orbits and then chain complex generated by these periodic orbits over lambda hat, which is Novikov ring. And then once we have this, we just compute homology. We say that the beta numbers are the same as the beta numbers of the manifold, and that's it. So this is the classical way of proving this the inequalities. So what we do is with that we construct a chain complex uh, over some bigger version of the Neurekov ring associated to the cyclic covering, uh, not cyclic, really, to the universal covering. This will be over a bigger ring. Which contains a G. So then we can, of course, compute homology of this complex, but this proves completely inefficient. And so instead, we define chain invariants of such complexes. which give lower bounds for a number of contractible periodic orbits. And it turns out that the first invariant of this chain complex is more than delta of G, which we uh, wanted. So this is inspired, of course, by, by the usual Morse theory. And um, in the case of Morse, usual Morse theory, this was, this was developed by Charcot. He wanted to understand what, what should we put instead of the usual Betty numbers in the case when the manifold is not simply connected and we want still the optimal Morse inequalities. So there is uh, this theory by Vladimir Sharkov. So if we start with Morse function, And then, what the lesson of Vladimir Sharko is, is that you should not compute the beta numbers of this to get the lower bounds because they are inefficient. So you should define the invariant just by, but just by definition, saying that we, uh, we define mi to be the minimal possible number of generators in the homotopy type of this complex and try to compute it differently because homology, directly homology, is inefficient. So homotopy invariance of chain complexes. So this is a big theory because now this this chain complexes are over the G. He developed a lot this uh, these things. It is not completely efficient because the G in general is a complicated ring with no good algebraic properties and working with it, it, it is really uh, it's painful, let's say it like that. <laughs> so uh, what is, in our case, so what, what we do, we do approximately the same thing. So we, we, we construct the, the floor chain complex on the regular covering of the manifold so then it will, G will act on this, and we will associate it, the chain complex and try to work with this. So there are two differences between the Morse theory and Fleur theory, and which I want to emphasize because this, they, they, uh, they prevent us to, to do more general things. So differences. So in Morse case, this chain complex is n graded. 
So it starts from zero and goes. So in this case, it's Z graded. That means that they, they are, there are generators in negative dimensions. So the homological algebra is completely different. different. Second thing that the ring is much worse, still worse than the group ring because it is a completion, it's a Novikov completion of the ring with this as a coefficient ring. Well, these are basically the reasons why uh, we prove, for example, just that the uh, P1 minus N is more than delta G. So this prevents really, these are the, the obstructions. We can't move further for the moment. So now uh, I can proceed to the proof. Maybe is there a question? Um, so as for the um, as for the proof, so first of all, already, already from, from here, I will assume that it's Calabi Yau. And I will explain only one particular case, so the, the best possible situation when it is Calabi Yau manifold and the group is finite, and it is fun, uh, the fundamental group of the manifold is finite. So just recall the definition of Novikov rings. We have this thing which ob obstructs the um, well-definedness of the action functional. So actually omega it gives a homomorphism from gamma to R, R and actually it is, um, no, I want more I actually now. And this is monomorphism. And then we have, this doesn't depend on the fundamental. This is even if even if we were on the sim, on the simply connected manifold, we would have problems with defining Clore theory because this story is. But now we have still G. So we have the group ring like this. And the Novikov ring is the extension of this thing. Where we allow infinite linear combinations of gamma i. So this, this is a finite one. subject to the condition that uh, this one so this is a very bad ring because we are now uh, <laughs> this finite group and if, if there were, were not finite group this would be by the way just the principal ideal domain which is very nice but unfortunately we want our non-simply connected manifold. So the coefficients are now in Z, ZG, and this makes the things less tractable. So definition. Um, 
So we have already met, we have our manifold also. So yeah. I can take the uh, covering of our manifold and then uh, associate it with the group G. Well, this is universal covering, actually, because I said the G is equal to pi 1m. Then this is module over the G, and this also is module over the G. Then I can tensor them, and if I can tensor, I will tensor them one over them. So this is they the, this is the object which is responsible for the homotopy type of the floor chain complex. And now the definition is that um, so this would be the minimal possible number of generators. of chain complex D um, yeah sorry I didn't say what is L L is here number L what we couldn't to M this is just charcoal style abstract definition, which gives nothing for the moon. Uh, well, three finite, uh, yes, three finitely generated in each dimension. Yes, they, of course, this is, they have IBM property because this maps to, to the usual music of rings. So so uh, when I write minimum, it is minimum over all such complexes. So this gives uh, invariants of the uh, of manifold M, which are here for give lower bounds for uh, number of contractible periodic orbits. So observation. And the theorem which we proved is that is more than that of G. So that, that the first number of this series of invariant invariants is more than delta of G. I will prove the theorem in uh, five minutes. Um, just I will note. for the moment that um, this fact implies that, that um, we can improve the Arnold day. Sorry. This fact implies that we can improve the usual homological estimates for the Arnold conjecture. So if we take, for example, Emma, symplectic Calabial with simple group, then of course this the sum of of these invariants is always more than sum of the Betty numbers, for example, with coefficients in a field. But here it is actually strictly greater because the first mu one is more than.
So they improve the homological magnetism of quantum systems. Now the proof of the theorem is um, not complicated. I think I have exactly ten minutes to tell how it works. Any question? So the story is that this this, this invariant is is very complicated by in definition. So it's it, in some sense it's almost no definition. Take just the minimal possible number of everything over everything and then try try to compute this. So what helps in this case is the local coefficients homology. So. So I recall that if we have a representation of a fundamental group to uh, some general linear group over a field, then we can form the chain complex like this and its homology is called the local coefficients and I will denote it by H of M Rom. So let's start with arbitrary local system like this. And how does it help with, with this the, with a complex over Novikov ring? So the point is that I can form also the representation of, from, from this representation of pi 1 of m to the um, Novikov ring, the GL of the Novikov ring. So rho to say the Not really a representation, a structure. And then just by, just by embedding f into big F, and then this homology is just the usual homology of M. And this implies that these big numbers in K are more than so BK. So I will denote this by beta, beta k of m. So this is not a, not a big thing. That it just says that the uh, number of generators of the complex is more than the number, than the dimension of uh, 
local coefficient homology. There's just, just one little step which I did. It's coming from here to here because Novikov uh, hint is Novikov complexity is always here. Okay. So this is not yet sufficient, but we can prove a little bit more. So generically, we have only this. So for any k, we just have the, uh, the number of genesis, the modern dimension of homology. So if we know that this, in addition, then uh, the first number of generators must be more than this plus one. And this is basically because that if it is equal to zero, then uh, in the chain complex, we need not only to generate the first homology, but also to kill the zeros. So and this. This gives one. So then, um, if we reformulate this, this thing will be more um, than. this plus epsilon rho for every That's just the same thing. Um, of course, we can use any field, but I want FP where P divides the order of G. The set of these representations is denoted by S. And we, therefore, we have that So this is just a reformulation of what I said, just the story of rewriting the same thing in slightly different terms. But the point is that there is a theorem that this thing is equal to delta of G. <laughs> so this is equal. So finally, they, um, this thing which is defined entirely in terms of group itself without any local coefficients or whatever it would be. So it can be recovered from the local coefficients, but in somehow in tricky way, not exactly through beta number, but adding this plus minus one. So this theorem uh, was known very long ago in 60s and 70s, so I couldn't even find the author of the theorem when I saw through literature, I think that is Swan. So I digged up to the up to this place and then I stopped. <laughs> Maybe somebody else knew it before. 
So that gives the, the result which we announced. Ah, and this is exactly the moment where I should stop. Thank you very much.